So is it fair to say that you have always needed a creative partner, a foil, as it were? Yeah, I think so. Throughout the years, that has tended to be the case. I could do it on my own, but I don't think I would do it nearly as well. The people I've worked with have brought a huge amount to the table. That begins with Mick, and then Roland came along with his amazing guitar playing and musical inventiveness. Can I just ask you about your creative relationship with Blixer, which, to put it mildly, ended pretty abruptly? Well, Blixer is the least nuanced person I've ever met in my life. With him, everything is just black or white. I admire that in a way because he's able to make difficult decisions in the studio. I found that enviable because I was often indecisive. That brutality of thinking, that resoluteness, that Germanness is what Blixer brought, alongside his distinctive guitar playing, of course. Did you ever write a song together? No. We never sat down and wrote together. In fact, most of Blix's guitar was laid on the tracks as overdubs after the song was recorded. That was his preferred way of working. Blixer liked to spend a lot of time deciding what he was going to play and then methodically applying it to the song that was already there. And he did it in a very beautiful and considered way. He really thought about the song, the lyrical content and what his contribution should be conceptually rather than just strumming along, which a lot of guitarists tend to do. I really appreciated that. Blixer never thought his job was to carry the song. He thought his job was to augment the song. In my experience, that's extremely rare. And given all that, his departure from the Bad Seeds must have been a difficult moment. Yeah, well, it was. The suddenness of it. It was typically bargeld in its cutthroat ruthlessness. So how did he let you know he was leaving the band? He sent an email, out of the blue, I have decided to leave the Bad Seeds, a weird Dear John letter of the most rudimentary and unsatisfying kind, almost as if it had been written by a robot. I was stunned. I loved him. He was a giant. For me, he's very much a symbol of a certain extremely fertile period of the Bad Seeds. And he took a lot more with him when he left than just his presence. He took a point of view, a way of thinking and a way of working. I think he just found that our way of making music had become too traditional. Having said that, his contributions to the records we were making, post Boatman's Call, had become pretty inconsequential. In the end, he did the right thing by leaving. He ripped apart the band and allowed us the opportunity to change and to grow. It was the shock that we needed. So there were no signs that he was unhappy before the email arrived? I think the last time I recorded with him, he stormed out of the studio. He was angry with me, or himself, or the world. It's very often hard to tell with Blixer. So what were you working on? We were recording a song for a Vim Vendors documentary about the blues that he was making for Martin Scorsese. Vim had asked various musicians to perform his favourite blues songs. I wanted to go against type and do a super upbeat version of I Feel So Good by J.B. Lenoir mostly because at the time the thought of the Bad Seeds doing some slow, lugubrious, oh-so-worthy blues cover filled me with absolute horror. But these up-tempo songs are tricky, and not as easy as they seem. They require a certain amount of technical finesse that Blixer, despite being one of my favourite guitarists, lacks. Plus, I suggested to the band that we base our performance on the Muppets, just totally frenetic and mad and super whacked out. Anyway, Vim is there and he's filming away and we're jumping about the place like fucking idiots doing take after take and Blixer is getting increasingly frustrated by the whole thing because I guess he just couldn't get to grips with the song. I don't know. Also, in certain situations, Blixer doesn't have like a very well-developed sense of humour to say the least. He has his famous explosive temper. It's impossible to exaggerate the performative level of Blix's fury. Eventually just leaps to his feet, throws down his guitar and screams those immortal words, I didn't get into rock and roll to play rock and roll. Just to be really annoying, I said, well, what about the Muppets? At which point he marched over to me and said, fuck the Muppets, you be a fucking Muppet. And then he marched out of the studio and I think that was the last time I ever saw him as a member of the Bad Seeds. So quite a moment then. Well... Never one to waste a good catastrophe, I turned to Vim and I said, I hope you filmed that. But Vim is just standing there with his mouth open and the camera hanging by his side. And I'm like, Vim, tell me you fucking filmed that. 
but he hadn't. I think he was like being respectful or something. 